Radu, lovely to meet you and congratulations on the film. Thank you so much. And uh, congratulations on winning the Golden Bear at Berlin as well earlier on this year. How, how did it feel to, to win such a big award? Oh, of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very good and very nice uh, and very important for the film. But otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe that the football uh, coach that uh, said to his crew, to his uh, team, uh, that they are allowed to celebrate if there is a victory only one day, and they are uh, allowed to, to be sad if there's a, a failure only one day as well. Uh, so I think, yeah, of course, I think uh, awards are important, you know, to recognize uh, a certain type of uh, cinema. And in a way, I'm more, I'm as happy for the award as for I'm happy for me as for the fact that it represents a type of cinema which is not necessarily uh, awarded, so I think that's important. But otherwise, uh, well, it's part of the game, and I, I take it lightly. But I, I don't emphasize it that much because there's, you know, there's films, and I, I even myself made films which are not awarded, and I don't have bad feelings about them because of that, you know, or no. other. Films. I, I never choose to see a film because it won an award. Sometimes, but most of the time, no. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of it is down to people's opinions. It's all very subjective, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. With another jury, somebody else would have. It would have the... been completely different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now yeah. we're talking during the London Film Festival because um, Bad Luck Banging is is being shown here. But unlike Berlin, people are actually going to get to see it on the big screen in a cinema. Will this be the first time that you've seen it in the cinema? with an audience? No, it's not the first time. It was uh, screened in a lot of places before. Uh, uh, even in Romania, it was released in cinemas and in other countries, it was released uh, in cinemas. Well, that's, that's good. So how, how, how have audiences reacted to it then? Because it's not the sort of film that you sit back and just take passively. No, and they were not passively. They were, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it was e exactly as you would expect. I mean, some people were very much against the film. Some people were more uh, accepting it, you, you know. So uh, I think it's, it's normal to, to devise people, to, de to divisive uh, people, to be divisive for, uh, as, uh, towards the film. And also I think I strongly believe that rejection, even people, there are a lot of people who rejected the film, saying this is not a film, this is not cinema, this is attacks our country, and so on and so forth. But I believe that acceptance is also a first step. Uh, no, rejection is a first step for a subsequent eventual accepting of the film. Uh, it happens in, even in my life as a viewer or as a reader of books, you know. Well, 10 years ago, maybe I tried to see a film or to read the book and rejected it, but it stayed in my mind. And then when I tried it again, I find it's actually quite good, you know. So I hope it, it happened like that in this case as well. And also, it, it would be far worse if people didn't react at all, if they were completely neutral. That's worse than them reacting, even if their reaction is negative. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I like the negative reaction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least, at least they have an opinion. They have feelings about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. And, and you wrote the film and you directed it as well. I mean, um, where did the idea originally come from? Was it actually prompted by the pandemic or was that germ of an idea in your head for a long time? No, it was before the pandemic and uh, it was generated by uh, some local news uh, stuff, tabloid press thing. Uh, so no, not, not, not big deal uh, from this point of view, because, you know, it was just a few real life cases like that, more or less like that. And they were uh, described in tabloid press, you know, in very, very dismissive words. 
And I thought that, uh, that uh, it's not the story itself, which is interesting. And this is why I consider my film more like a sociological uh, film in a way, but it's much more important than the story, what is behind, uh, what is around the story, the connections, the juxtaposition of the story with the society, with the, the philosophy, with the politics, all these things I think are the film itself in a way, not only the story. So the film is, is set during the pandemic, but you made it during the pandemic as well, didn't you? Oh, yes. So what sort of challenges did that present you as a filmmaker? There must have been loads. Uh, yes, I don't know. yes, yes, it was because, uh, you know, you're morally responsible for the crew and the cast, even if it's not necessarily from the low point of view. Uh, so I, I really felt, I would have felt very bad if somebody would have uh, got infected while making the film, but this didn't happen. Uh, fortunately, we were very careful. We tested everyone uh, very often. Uh, we, uh, I moved scenes which were supposed to be inside. I moved them outside. We didn't have proper lunch breaks, but only sandwiches that we ate outside. So actually we, we wore masks all the time. So yeah, it was a lot of challenges uh, into that, but in the end, I think it was for the better for the, uh, for the film because the film expresses very much its time and for the crew because nobody got sick in the end, you know. And certainly in the, the third section of the film where um, Evie is facing all the parents, the, the face masks almost sort of come into their own, really, because everybody's wearing them. And certainly with, with the characters, it's almost as if the masks tell you something about the character. I mean, the one that comes into my mind is the head teacher whose mask is always loose and falling yeah. off. And it's almost symbolic of the way she hasn't got any control over the meeting at all. Yes, it becomes a symbol. <laughs> it, it, it does. Yes. How, how did the actors, though, react to having to wear masks throughout? Because, of course, they've got half of their face covered and, and their voices are a bit muffled and that kind of it is. Uh, well, some of them, of course, didn't like it, but some of them were very happy because they were vulnerable persons and they uh, gladly accepted it. Uh, I made a joke, uh, I said to everybody that uh, at least they have the chance to, to act well now. <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't, uh, they didn't like that. <laughs> and also, you know, when the film was finished, uh, many, many distributors say, oh, this would be the perfect film to dub. You know, because it's so easy to you, you do it in one day. I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't do it. No. And, uh, no, so yeah, yeah. And after this, the first uh, discussions, no, everybody accepted it. And uh, in the end, uh, and in the end, yes, it becomes like the surreal part of the film in a way. All these mask people shouting at each other. I mean, in, in some ways, they almost reminded me of a, a sort of chorus from classical theatre, because when you looked at them en masse, all you could just see was with the masks and just eyes above them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that's an interesting comment. I was thinking more of another tradition in theatre, which would be the, the Commedia dell'arte. Right, uh, yes, OK. A little bit, because of, you know... Uh, uh, because of the dresses, everybody's dressed like his profession. And, yes. Yeah. 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 So, look, looking at the the film as, as a whole, um, it's not a very flattering portrait of people in general, really. I mean, at one point you've got an elderly lady, lady who actually says nobody cares about anybody, which kind of sums it up. And people do come across as being quite unsympathetic and quite aggressive. It, it's really quite bleak. Um, I wondered 
how much that reflected your own viewpoint or, or do you see the film more perhaps as a bit of a wake up call to people? Oh. Yeah, it's always uh, tricky to, to, to try to link a work of art with author's opinions, direct opinions, because of course the film uh, reflects some of my opinions, but not all of them. <clears throat> and I wanted to make a film which is much more complex than my own uh, thinking, you know, than my own uh, uh, thing. So uh, my own way of, of seeing the... So in a way, I would say that neither of your uh, proposals is, is not... Uh, is not bad and is not incorrect, but they are not complete either. So I would try to uh, add something from what you say, uh, apart from what you said, that in a way for me, the film is, as I said, a kind of sociological explorations using tools of cinema, uh, trying to explore what, uh, what it means uh, to be obscene, what's the connection between body and body politic, what's the, I don't know, morality issues at stake. All this kind of more exposed in a more direct sociological way than, uh, than a wake up call. Yes, in a way it is also a wake up call, but to what? It's not very clear. <laughs> Radu, it's been lovely to talk to you. Really appreciate it. And I have to say, I did enjoy the film. It was absolutely fascinating. Um, so I hope you. people go, go and see it because it is certainly worth seeing. It will certainly get people thinking and talking, if nothing else. I hope and that's so. kind of what you want. <laughs> <laughs>